first. <laughs> well, what a blessing to be among such wonderful and distinguished individuals, some of whom I know, some I are going to be new friends, of course. Um, thank you all for turning out in support of this event. And my most heartfelt thanks to Lady Mary Rayford and Sir Allen, who have been just the most wonderful hosts of of our family for years and years and years. We've known each other and great supporters of the Weechel Center. I'm sure we wouldn't, our doors would not be open had it not been for the constant help that they provide in, in, in buying our artwork and promoting the Weechel Center and just putting an awareness in such an important location as Santa Fe where so many indigenous cultures are the melting pot of indigenous cultures. And um, it's, it's just so wonderful to have such loyal and wonderful friends and great hosts. So many, many thanks to you. And of course, all of our other Santa Fe long-term friends and family, Greg and Cindy and Dana and Sarah, where are you? And you all knew who you are. Jesse, thanks for being the bartender. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, um, of course, we had a whole other thing planned because the mayor was going to come, but you know how politicians are. <laughs> no offense to Mayor Weber, but we're not going to hold up the show um, waiting for him. But what I thought I'd do is show you my little two and a half minute video that I prepared for my appearance at the UN in May. Um, I was given an award there in uh, where the General Assembly meets and uh, sitting in the chairs of who knows who was sitting in those chairs, but um, I left a wad of chewing gum under the desk just to <laughs> mark my territory. <laughs> I guess I'm a she-wolf at heart. Um, I guess I wasn't supposed to say that, right? <laughs> well, symbolically. <laughs> I think I dropped the mic. <laughs> what should I do with this? OK. Anyway. Um, they wanted a two-minute video and a one-minute talk. Um, yeah, dream on, right? <laughs> you can talk longer than one minute. <laughs> Maybe I'll take this off or? Oh, OK. Well, so I'll turn this on. So it was a two-minute, as I say. So um, it kind of encapsulates the work of the Weechel Center, and we had to kind of hurry it up because we only had we had to squish a whole lot, just two minute, two and a half minutes, and then I'll tell you what I said in my minute speech afterwards. So, so yeah. So here, just let me say um, the name of this. Okay, play. That's, that's not me talking. What is this? A bootleg Chinese uh, TV. <laughs> Volume 89. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Karma. Yeah, um, later turned into a vocation because what I stumbled upon was a, a pre-Hispanic culture still okay. alive and well, living in the Sierra Madre Occidental in a little crack in the world because of the topography there. And they, ma they maintain their culture for thousands of years. And so I recognized immediately, you know, knowing the fate of so many other indigenous cultures throughout the world, that if someone wasn't going to step up and really try and help them navigate the rapids of social change that was upon them, that they just disappeared into some museum basement or somewhere. The biggest message is, is that a culture that's so ancient and have lived in such an isolated location for thousands of years have huge messages for humanities. I think of them as safeguarding the seeds of humanity's future, not only the physical, you know, non-GMO seeds that they, they preserve beans and squash and corn, of course, but seeds of wisdom, indigenous wisdom that was once a part of everybody's life on this planet, and information that's come down through the ages that these people have been safeguarding all these centuries, and it's definitely under threat. Uh, the evangelists, the mining companies, the agro-industries, the, the alcoholism. There's so many things that are causing the people to give up this ancient way of life and, and lose their language. And when the last words of we chol are spoken, uh, not only a language disappears, but a whole way of looking at life and being on this earth and being caretakers of the earth, which is their big message to humanity. 
that goes with them. So it really is an SOS right now to the world. We need to embrace these people and to safeguard these seeds of humanity's future. Nene. Kinda sizes it up. Pretty good. <laughs> so um Obviously, it was just a very quick overview. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let her take over. <laughs> I'll let her take over and have another glass of wine. Can we just turn it off? Yeah, you can turn it off. Then. Go away! Go away! Well, it's true. Um, we have so much to be thankful for that the indigenous wisdom that's come through the ages still thrives and is still alive and well in some cultures. But compared to what's been lost, it's like a huge tapestry. Think about humanity as a huge tapestry, beautiful, beautiful weaving or piece of art that now has gaping holes in it, eaten, eaten away by the moss of modern civilization. and and, and um, so now this tapestry, it's time for Spider Woman to come out and reweave that tapestry because the indigenous people have the wisdom to help us end the war against nature. Uh, the use of the medicine plants and the medicine people and the curanderos and the spiritual guides are the guardians of the ancient knowledge that's been lost to most of the Western world. And we need to have them we need to have this knowledge recuperated and, and thrive in our schools, in, our, in the mainstream, and find ways to create bridges between all the different still existing indigenous cultures on the planet so that there's much more communication between tribes, tribal peoples, from First Nation peoples of all of the Americas, and so that we can really build strong that will lead all of humanity to a better future. So um, I'm up for that. Just <laughs> call me the bridge builder and walk all over me, please. Walk all over. <laughs> I have been pretty walked over, <laughs> come to think of it. But um, so I never thought that I'd look at myself in the mirror and be looking at the face of a Nobel Peace Prize nominee. That That's the least of what I could ever imagine. And so I have a feeling that um, spirit is behind this one. And I'm not going to say, oh, you know, Jane Goodall's going to win or Greta Thunberg, although I would love for little 16-year-old Swedish Greta Thunberg to win because her message is that of protecting the planet and make provoke, providing an awareness of how important it is that we all get on the bandwagon of being being custodians, taking a more custodial ro role of the beautiful planet, the beautiful mother that we live on. So um, I would even cast my votes to Greta Thunberg. But um, she's 16, and I'm 68. So um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she has plenty of um, time to, to do so many wonderful things in the world. That's her calling now. <laughs> No, it's the mayor calling saying he's going to be late. Well, <laughs> but um, yes, I'm am uh, among some amazing fellow nominees, and it would be great to see any of these magnificent human beings um, be recognized for their contributions to the planet and to the rest of humanity. And you know, the thing that I've learned most in all these 40 years, where we keep saying 40 years, 40 years, but it was 1975, I was 24, and now I'm uh, 68. And so it's been many, many decades. Um, and the, the biggest thing I've learned is the power of intention and never giving up, never giving up on your dreams. Now, it kind of hurts my heart a little bit, Silao, when you say, you know, mom wasn't there for me because she was out doing her thing in the world. But ultimately, look at this, look at this, Silao. You have <laughs> we really didn't mix it up good. <laughs> yeah. And look at this Rosie. <laughs> and uh, daughter Angelica. Um, each one of these amazing individuals has uh, really 
uh, taken the baton, you're passing it on, and they've stepped up to the plate, and they're in full speed ahead. You know, they don't hang up on me when I cry for money because it's payday on Friday, and uh, they go out on a limb to make sure that the Weechel Center doors, Jerry Lynn, <laughs> Jerry Lynn of Weechel Love has a beautiful line of, of jewelry that we produce for her. And um, get her card. Um, but so many people in so many ways. I could be here all night. Greg and Cindy are, are friends from Santa Fe, but they're family. Our kids grew up together, and they've taken us in all these years. So all of these people know the struggle. All the people know what it takes to keep a project like this. The doors are open, and we're thriving. They might not be open next week, but up until now, they are thriving. And people's lives are changing. The quality of lives are changing. The qualities of their visions and their future for themselves are changing. And the younger generation, some of them will say, well, why would I want to be an artist? Why would I want to make a mask or yarn painting? My parents are artists, and look, you know, they're living in a shack, and they don't, they, they're not prospering at all. Why would I want to do that? Well, you know, they're right. Artists don't make a lot of money, and that's really a shame. But I think that what I've done is really created alternatives as a protector of the arts and as somebody who passes on the artistic traditions and finds way, find, I found many, many ways that we told people can make a good living and raise the quality of, li of life by strictly adhering to the beauty and the, both the spiritual and aesthetic, art aesthetic traditions of their culture. So I am a guardian. And um, I take my role seriously. And now with this nomination, forget about it. <laughs> you know, it is such a platform to get out the message of the importance of embracing indigenous peoples and, and indigenous wisdom and helping them, their cultures to survive and, and instilling a pride of the heritages that have been kept along for alive and well for so long. And even though so much is lost, there's still hope, and I'm not giving up. And so that's why this platform of having this nominee is really, you know, I'm just um, intending to be a powerhouse for, um, you know, I'm this white lady who was born in Chicago. What am I doing being the nominee for uh, an indigenous nation? And, you know, people scratch their head, and I'm sure that I'll be criticized, but, um, you know, when they have a Nobel nomination, they can cr criticize me, right? Um, <laughs> so I'm beyond that. What I am really interested in doing is um, getting the word out and bringing the awareness of planetary custodianship to the world, to uh, the First Nations people, and, and never give up, never give up. That being said, I'll just tell you one other thing since we got time and most of the food on the table is gone. Um, I think um, one aspect of this nomination that I never thought I would have the opportunity to put out to the world is the decriminalization of the, the psychedelic plants, the visionary plants. That means peyote, um, mushrooms, ayahuasca, ibogaine. There's so many plant teachers out there who are screaming, and they're screaming at me because I'm not, I've never loved public speaking, but you know, this shoulder, the angel on this shoulder says, come on girl, you gotta be our spokesperson, you gotta get this knowledge of the plants out to the world in the right way, not um, creating recreational quote unquote drugs because they aren't drugs. These plants are our allies, they're our teachers. They share the world with us and they have so much knowledge to impart to humanity and the fact that people can go to jail because they have they participate in ceremonies or, or look for the spiritual paths through the guides of the plants. That's crazy. So my future path is the decriminalization of these very special medicine plants and not, you know, not like we used to do when I, in the 70s, you know, take whatever and go watch that Led Zeppelin concert or something. No, it's not about that. It's finding our guides 
back to our center. It's finding, restoring the equilibrium between human spirit and the human animal, restoring the balance between humans and nature and relationships of reciprocity. And the plants are screaming at me. They're saying, go out and tell it to the world. And, and, and I say, no, 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 I, I, I'm afraid. And I'm going to get attacked by everybody because they're drugs. And I'm going to get on all these lists. And, you know, every paranoia I can say, think of, you know, uh, I think of, but then this angel says, get up there, open your mouth, and let us do the rest. So that's what I'm doing right now. The plants are speaking to you through me. <laughs> and um, blessed be, hopefully we'll be successful in decriminalization so that people have the opportunity to embrace and be thankful for all the indigenous cultures and First Nations, people who have had the courage and the perseverance and the tenacity to keep their sacred rituals alive and to help guide us people who are lost in the forest as to how we can create our own rituals, how we can, how we can use these plants to heal ourselves and, and the holes in the tapestry, how we can really reweave humanity into a beautiful, beautiful work of art that the gods are shining upon and said, hey, you all got it together. So now listen, if you know Mr. Nobel, put in a good word for me, okay? Because I'm out there for you. Okay. <laughs> Remember I said something about Susanna could probably talk more than one minute? Oh. Than about 20. Uh, but while you were talking about that subject, did you mention about you recently before the City Council of Oakland? Oh. She went before the City Council and argued this case. Well, you can explain yeah. what, what was yeah. it. Well, there was a movement in Oakland called Decriminalize Nature, Oakland DMO, and they knew I was in town, and they wanted me to be their keynote speaker when they went up in front of the council members for the vote, and they said there's some real hardliners in there. They will never vote for it, but maybe we'll at least get a, a majority of the vote, but I went out there and gave them hell, and, the, and it passed unanimously, so <laughs> Oakland is the first city in the U.S where all psychedelics are decriminalized. That means if the cop stops you and you have mushrooms or peyote or ayahuasca in your car, you don't get thrown into jail and no record. It's a, they're still schedule one drugs, according to the, to, to the federal law. But um, it was first Oakland and um, the Berkeley meeting is next in September. And um, I was hoping the mayor was gonna come because I <laughs> wanted to, make an appointment in his office with him to talk about the theme because I think it would be really great if Santa Fe was the next city to do that. So uh, anybody got connections there, that would be great. So. <laughs> so Susanna talked a, a, a bit about, a little bit about all of her projects she's been doing over the last 40 years. And she has, a, a, anyway, the presentation she gave this weekend was very in-depth. But she has a brochure here. Thank you, dear. She's have, got a brochure, so everyone feel free to pick it up. It's got the website on there. It gives you a lot more in-depth information about what they're doing. It also has an address on the back if anyone would like to make any donations to help support these projects. Because these are not, you know, 40 years to this point, these are ongoing projects. But the other interesting thing, and what's nice, is any purchase of the art is like a donation. You're purchasing the art, that, those, those monies, that fund, those funds are going into her projects. Keeping the doors open. Yeah. Our school going. And so do go to the website because it talks about our sustainable agriculture project. It talks about our school that teaches the kids to read and write in their own language and reenact their cultural traditions. Um, check out, it's the weecholcenter.org and go to the Nobel page. And there's a very in-depth, beautiful presentation with some of the photographs I've been taking over many decades and, I, and with, with, with great narration. So make sure you click on and see the slideshow. And there's also a donate button on the website. You can donate through PayPal. So if you're so inclined, we would really appreciate that. Let's all join hands together and get this thing going full speed ahead. Um, adios. Thank you to my beautiful family and Olga and everyone for coming and being here. It's great to meet y'all. Great to see my old friends. Oh yeah. Oh, yes. you, you can purchase